everyone, it's Susanna here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is part three on heart structure and blood flow. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now, let's get started. Let's compare ventricular diastole, when the ventricles are between contractions, with ventricular systole, when the ventricles are contracting. During ventricular filling, the left side of the heart fills with oxygenated blood from the lungs, and the right side of the heart fills with deoxygenated blood returning from the systemic veins. So during this time, the ventricles fill with blood. Diastole, then, is really the time between contractions, whereas systole is just another word that is specifically referring to heart contraction. So during systole, the ventricles build up enough pressure to eject blood. First, the papillary muscle pull the chordae tendine tight. The word I like to use here is taut. Next, the AV valves slap shut, causing an audible lub sound that can be heard upon auscultation during a heartbeat. We call this S1, or the first heart sound. Finally, the ventricles build up enough pressure to open the semilunar valves of the great arteries, and then the ventricles eject their blood. The left ventricle ejects its blood out the aorta, whereas the right ventricle ejects its blood out the pulmonary trunk. So the semilunar valves right here, they only remain open while pressure is at its highest in the ventricles. As soon as the ventricles begin to relax, although they're still higher pressure than they are at rest, but as soon as they begin to relax, the semilunar valves will fall shut. And they make this audible dub sound known as S2 or the second heart sound. Let's watch the heart cycle through systole or contraction and diastole relaxation a few times. Watch how the heart changes. To conclude this video, let's describe blood flow through the heart one more time together. Oxygenated blood passes through the left pulmonary veins and the right pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Blood passes through the left AV valve into the left ventricle. When the ventricles pump, oxygenated blood is forced upward and through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta and the aortic arch and deliver oxygen-rich blood to all the body organs. After gas exchange, nutrient delivery, and waste collection, deoxygenated blood returns to the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. It enters into the right atrium. This blood passes through the right AV valve and into the right ventricle. When the ventricles pump, deoxygenated blood is forced through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk, which branches to the pulmonary arteries, the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. These arteries carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs for gas exchange. Freshly oxygenated blood then travels in the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, and we are back where we started. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.